The reason I'm going first is because I just wanted to say a little bit about Lizzie. And, um, well, we've done many mad things together and her growing up. But one of the things that's, for whatever reason, I don't know, it's always gone through, there's been a theme of hats. And as you all now know, I don't get on very well with hats, but I did try my best today with my big hat. And um, Lizzie didn't go for convention with big hats, but um, her sister did <coughs> go for big hats, and her sister also managed to get the wedding hat before Lizzie. And this is Gemma. And um, this is at Zanna's wedding, stood on a staircase not dissimilar from today's at Pottersbury Lodge. And as you can see, she's wearing the bride's hat and the veil and has got the confetti. And Lizzie, older sister, got that first, but then Lizzie had to become the older sister and look after Gemma. And there was an awful stage when the positions changed when um, Lizzie had to take over and they fought like cat and dog, didn't you? But the one thing that these girls always did, and I have no idea why, is if they got the opportunity when we were out, was put hats on. And Lizzie and I still do that. In fact, she gave me a calendar a few years ago of all the occasions when we have been out shopping and have put on all sorts of weird and wonderful hats. And yet neither of us have ever wear them. So, and now I'm going to hand you over to her dad, Mick. He's going to tell you a little bit more about our wonderful daughter, Lizzie. Mick. Um, again, I want to thank everyone for coming. I know you've quite a distance and all these unacceptable circumstances. Um, but I just want to thank you very much. Um, I want to tell you something about Lizzie was very... She's got a bit of an artistic bent. I don't know, I can't remember. Oh, not not that. Artistic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how she was. But this was her idea. It's, it's made of um, clay. But it's not her idea. A happy couple. Two people on a sofa there. <laughs> and also... <laughs> Before you went through. <laughs> <laughs> you know about three. <laughs> but also, I've got a little wallet here with, there must be like a thousand milk teeth. It's got 24, all of them. <laughs> and um, she's, she's got a little wallet And I'm sure she wrote these notes to her. Uh, <coughs> I think she was around <laughs> 10 or 11. <laughs> This response dated 29th of September 1997 <laughs> to the Tooth Fairy. It's my birthday and I will be 11 on Monday next week. Hope you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like the Spice Girls? <laughs> <laughs> this is typical, typical music, actually. This is another one. This is um, the 5th of November 19. Six. Hello, Tooth Fairy. I brushed this tooth before I put it in a pot. But you aren't scared of fireworks. Sorry about the tippet. There's a bit of tippet to I hope you like my tooth. How many teeth of mine have you got? <laughs> it would be good to know. Love from Lizzie Corbett, age 10. <laughs> Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> um, here she's complaining about, I need a new toothbrush. I'm choosing. Mine is like a scrubbing brush. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, though, this, this young lady has been an absolutely beautiful kid. So she never caused me a problem at all. Uh, I think it was about 2 o'clock in the morning one day when she came back to me after a broken relationship. Um, she'd skidded on, her, on the ice, on a roundabout, and smashed her wheel, and done the time. And I was called out, and uh, woke up in the middle of the night. I wasn't sleeping, actually, until she got back. Anyway, I went out, changed the time, and got back. And that's... I think I changed it. You <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
<laughs> yeah, I, what I'd like to do now is race them up. <laughs> <laughs> so we're busy. Right, Fiona, you're up. Do you want to change this, sir? No. <laughs> right, Fiona's now going to do a reading, which she should have done in the wedding. Oh, it's wonderful. But <laughs> she didn't infect anyone, and it's not her fault. I vow to honour the commitment made this day, which, unlike the flowers and the cake, will not wither or decay. A promise not to obey but to respond joyfully, to forgive and to console. For once incomplete, we are now whole. I vow to bear in mind that if at times things seem to go from bad to worse, we also go from bad to better. The lost purse is handed in. The letter contains wonderful news. Trains run on time. <laughs> Hurricanes run out of breath. Blood subside, and toast lands jam side up. And with this ring, my final vow, to recall, whatever the future may bring, the love I feel for you now. Do you want to do it? Right, thank you everyone for coming, and me and Lizzie like really mean this, like we've just so proud and of you've all turned up, so whatever you, raise a glass to yourselves, thank you all for coming, and it means ever so lot to us. I'm buckling. My speech is a little bit different because I wrote it, obviously, a couple of months ago, so obviously thanks for coming, but basically you've all had a day off. A free meal. <laughs> and you've got no kids. <laughs> sorry, Pastor. Sorry, Pastor <laughs> uh, when I was going to get married, everyone said that I'd change. Uh, now I am really locked down. <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank everyone for coming from long distances, my family coming from uh, Wallington and the Isle of Sheppey. Uh, we've had a lot of people come from Pottersbury. How, how they all made it out of the village and got here, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'd also like to say thank you for having no veggies and vegans, because the only thing they kill is a conversation. Sorry, Haggis. <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank uh, Fiona for doing that reading. Love, I'd like to thank Wayne for the next reading he's going to do. Uh, bridesmaids, thank you very much. Uh, Grace, who's enjoying her jelly and ice cream. Or, uh, page boy, little James. Uh, I'd like to thank Sarah and Mick for welcoming into the family. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> As you know, it's been a week of hell, but thankfully the mother-in-law's going home tomorrow. <laughs> I don't feel... Uh, I'd like, to thank, I'd like to thank Uncle Joe that obviously couldn't make it today due to circumstances, but he's made the cake stand and he personalised it with a CD in the middle. Uh, he's done all our little, the top table's wooden decorations that he's made. And the platform, and the platform signs you've got on your table. Oh. Enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, need to thank... 
Lizzie, actually. <laughs> I'd, like, I'd like to thank Lizzie for turning up today. <laughs> because the last wedding we went to, separately, she went to the wrong wedding. <laughs> she turned up to a civil partnership, and uh, I was at Wayne's, waiting for her. <laughs> but lucky the coach driver at the other wedding decided to give her a lift to the other wedding. <laughs> Don't know. Explains a lot from earlier, don't it, really? But <laughs> uh, I love, I'd like to thank her for what she's done for this wedding. Uh, she's done everything in front of you, I will not lie. All I did was get out of the, work, out of the house and do a lot of overtime. <laughs> if I couldn't get overtime, I would go and sit in a park on my own. <laughs> She kept asking me decisions. Uh, unfortunately, it was during the Cricket World Cup. So it was yes, no, yes, and anything else after that was no because she was getting above her station and what she wanted for the day. Uh, I'd also like to thank her for putting up with me because uh, I think you might hear a few stories later. Uh, whatever happens, she is always there for me. And even when I'm in the wrong, she finds that little bit of positive <laughs> where I was definitely in the right. <laughs> <laughs> and I definitely was the victim. Always. <laughs> Sorry, Mark, not you. <laughs> it's at that time. <laughs> uh, before I hand over to Wayne's reading and then the best man. Oh, sorry, I'd like to also thank my mum and dad. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's an old iPad, it can't keep up, it can't keep up. Thank you for the contribution you've made. Uh, and just thank you for everything you've done for us, really. Support. Yeah, you've done... <laughs> no, sorry, what Lizzie said. Cool, my head hurts now. Uh, we got presents now. Yeah. Okay, we've just got a couple of little presents to hand out. And then I'll close my speech. This is for Mick. There you go, Mick. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. There you go. My mum and dad. This is from my mum and dad. There you go, father. You must be excited with that. <laughs> and this. And this, if she will accept it now, <laughs> is to my mother-in-law. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> Don't drop them. Aww. Right, so all I need to do is say, before I hand over, I think my mum should go for a lie down now and check in her room. <laughs> before yeah. Cohen's speech. But next up's Wayne, who's going to come down and do a reading. Yeah, right. That's a shot. No pressure. <laughs> no worries, mate. I've got paper. But you can have my paper, Wayne. No, it's fine. <laughs> sure? Yeah. Well, like I'm an intruder. Leave me stranded in my hour of need. Paper. Can I just take my drink? I probably will at some point. I don't know. Union by Robert Fulgham. <laughs> this is not, not the time or the place. <laughs> you have known each other from the first glance of acquaintance to this point of commitment. At some point, you decided to marry. From that point of yes to this, point, this moment of yes, indeed, you've been making commitments in an informal way. All of those conversations that were held in a car or over a meal or during long walks. All of those conversations that began with when we're married and continued with I will and you will and we will. All of those late night talks that included someday and somehow and maybe. All of those promises that were unspoken matters of the heart. All of these common things and more are the real process of a wedding. The symbolic vows that you're about to make, but <laughs> forget that bit, are a way of saying to one another, you know all those things that we've promised and hoped and dreamed, well I meant it all, every word. 
Look at one another and remember this moment in time. Before this moment, you may, may have been many things to one another. Acquaintance, friend, companion, lover, dancing partner, even teacher. For you, you have learned much from one another these few past years. Shortly, you will say a few words that will take you across the threshold of life. <laughs> and these things between you will never be quite the same. For after today, you will say to the world, this is my husband and this is my wife. So I guess it's my turn. You just raise a toast first of all and get you all drinking because I ain't doing this on my own. <laughs> right. I would like to begin by quickly saying a few words of thanks myself to everyone who's made today possible. Lizzie's parents, Mick and Sarah, David's parents, Brian and Lorraine. Thank you to our lovely bridesmaids who did such a wonderful job and I'm, who you, I'm sure you'll all agree look amazing. Eclipsed only by Lizzie, who looks absolutely stunning. Thanks to our ushers for a sterling effort. Who would have thought the expense that was required in suiting and booting four guys to do so little? <laughs> I just, want to say per I just want to say personal thanks to David and Lizzie for allowing me to play a big part in their special today as best man. Only a giant of a man can fill such a huge role. And of course, I'm the perfect candidate. And last, by no means least, thanks to all our wonderful guests, you absolute warriors, for coming to share in this very special occasion today of great uncertainty. The fact so many of you have traveled here in difficult circumstances really is a sign of how loved Lizzie and Dave is. It's got nothing to do with the large supply of toilet roll that was promised to each of you that were attended. <laughs> but rest assured, we have plenty of food and drink and toilet paper to get us through today and make it a day not to forget. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Cole Hain, and I've been warned by the groom here not to reel too many skeletons he has in the closet. That's rather surprising. <laughs> However, I heard nothing mentioned about the monsters he had in his bed. <laughs> But with the pleasure you <laughs> had, past tense, past tense. But with the pleasantries out the way, let's proceed. So David Liam McAuliffe, also known as Corliffe, Ginge, Riddler, Dobby the Elf, Ginger Spice, and Brian's number one. <laughs> but better known simply as Ginger Dave. Although the, the way that hairline is going, mate, it's going to be just Dave soon, mate. <laughs> I first met Ginger Dave on what I believe was his 19th birthday, and his old man decided a few pints down the George was in order. It just so happens myself and a few of the lads here today also happened to be out, and we mistakenly invited him up to the city for a few cheeky liveners, only, only to see him disappear within a matter of minutes. Apparently the apple sours and strobe lights were a bit too much for his delicate eyes. <laughs> but since that fateful night, he's been a regular fixture we just haven't been able to shake off. But it later became apparent why. This gangly looking, Egypt with the flicker dreams kept showing up <laughs> night after night. It turns out until up until that night, and before my good self of course, Ginger Dave had one friend and one friend only. And the parents were a little worried he was becoming a little too attached. Let me introduce him now. At the age of 39, which is about 250 dog years, Dave's one and only friend, Baxter. <laughs> hey, patient zero. <laughs> Upon meeting Ginger Dave, you quickly learn that he's an Arsenal through and through. Arsenal, not arsehole, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> cut, him, cut him, he says, and he'll bleed red. Something we, got quite, we see quite a lot of in Lisbon recently. <laughs> but give him his juice, he follows him week out, week in, week out, over land and sea, and Leicester. <laughs> this is, however, if you're 4-0 down to Liverpool, half-time, away from home, and by the full-time whistle, you're in Manchester. Or even if you're in Newcastle, 
where a Sovereurist to vent his anger, he decided to wait a couple of hours after the game to just really give it to the players, only to end up in a water fight with a 65-year-old man by the name of Mr. Arsene Wenger. <laughs> Disgraceful. So as you can tell, Ginger Dave, going to football with Ginger Dave is an experience in itself. After a few pints and an Arsenal loss, the Arsenal rage him at the Arsenal blood is flowing, and on occasion, what we know is ginger rage appears. <laughs> this can lead to a host of situations, be it tears or tantrums. However, rest assured, after being on the receiving end of one such tantrum, I can attest it's absolutely harmless. In fact, I've asked some of the other victims who are, can also attest to this. You've got poor little Mark McDonald, who <laughs> suffered a swinging nose to the top of his head in Lille. The six foot four Welsh rugby fan who shamefully giggled when Ginger Dave landed a slap on his cheek that merely tickled him. Or my personal favourite, the police horse at QPR who got a matchday programme thrown at it because he just looked at him funny. Unfortunately, it seems football weekends is all he'd be allowed now, as our, I've heard our bride here today has already stamped her authority and he's no longer allowed out with the lads on any away weekend trips. There has been a host of accidents, so I can understand why. You've got the broken arm in Spain, a 30-minute cigarette habit, cigarette habit that he picked up in Cavos, and it nearly killed him. You've got a gashed head in Lisbon. Sorry, Lorraine, I don't think you know about that one. <laughs> <laughs> also, shamefully on the same trip, being so drunk that none other than Mr. Bill Morley had to escort him home. <laughs> Although we're later told that Morley somehow forgot he was the in the parental role and thought Dave was there to take him home. <laughs> it meant the concierge had to come out and clean up after him. <laughs> but most shocking of all, his trip to Lithuania, <laughs> where inside a pizza cafe, he was sexually groomed by the local gangster. <laughs> and for those of you who are a little <laughs> unclear of how and where, allow me to use Baxter as demonstration. <laughs> However, with these days well and truly behind him as a married man, and it means that Dobby is no longer a free elf. <laughs> so Lizzie, it is only fitting that I return this to its rightful master. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter reference there. <laughs> now Lizzie, an ever calming influence on Ginger Dave, and in frank, frankly, if you could put up with that Frank Spencer voice on a daily basis, then you're a saint. <laughs> but what are you getting exactly? Well, as Merson say, the, the lad is top, top draw. Honest to a T, happy to go out of his way, and always knows when to get around him. I lost myself. <laughs> Between the lads, we all know, though, how smitten he is with you. Actually, his shows of an ever endearing love he shares with the lads is a bit too much. But it's fair to say he'll do all right by you. I read somewhere you don't marry the person you can live with, you marry the person you can't live without, which I think we can all agree is exactly what Dave and Lizzie have done today. It's been a privilege to be their best man, so can I ask everyone to please join me in raising their glasses and raise a toast to the happy couple. The happy couple. Cheers.